Okay. Good morning and welcome to the June 29th, 2021 regular meeting of the Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors. Uh, we will have a regular agenda this morning and uh, have final budget discussions this afternoon at 1.30. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Supervisor Koenig. Here. Friend. Here. Coonerty. Here. Caput. Here. Person. Here. Thank you, Chair. You have a quorum. Thank you. Um, we will now have a moment of silence and pledge of allegiance. Is there any supervisor that wants to make a special comment? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind. Um, sure. So uh, as we go into this moment of silence, I'm going to ask everyone to keep in mind uh, and their thoughts, uh, the family of Marm Kilpatrick, uh, his wife, Maya Peterson, who uh, was a uh, renowned scholar, history scholar at UCSC, loved by her colleagues, a brilliant scholar uh, and her uh, staff, um, uh, faculty, staff, and students. Uh, anyway, she passed away uh, during childbirth, um, and uh, we want to um, send our hearts and prayers to her partner, Mom, Mom Kirkpatrick, who has been an amazing partner uh, with the county over the past year as we navigated COVID. He's been a scholar and a servant, uh, and uh, it's incredibly unfair that he now um, has to navigate the loss of his wife and his child. Uh, and um, and anyway, please keep their, them in, the, in your in your hearts and minds. Thank you. Any other supervisor have any comments? Okay, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, to the Republic which stands which is one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have uh, item number three? Do we consideration of any late additions to the regular agenda and uh, additions or deletions to the consent uh, or regular agendas? Yes, uh, Chair McPherson and members of the board, we have a number of corrections to the agenda and revisions. On the regular agenda, item number 11, there's additional materials, attachment D, notice of public hearing and assessment ballot procedure, insert after packet page 259. On the consent agenda, there's additional materials on item number 32, revised memo, packet page 426. And on item 82, there's additional materials, revised attachment A, packet page 1232. In addition, uh, there's a, an addenda to the consent agenda, item 85.1, adopt the Santa Cruz County Assessment Appeals local rules of notice and procedures to facilitate the work of the Santa Cruz County Assessment Appeals Board as recommended by the County Administrative Officer. Um, there's a board memo printout and there's the Sa Santa Cruz County Assessment Appeals Board local rules. There's also an addenda 85.2, direct the chair to write a letter to our state delegation to support the governor's proposal to establish a statewide judicial pretrial program in the 21-22 state budget as recommended by Supervisor Friend and Supervisor McPherson. There's a board memo printout. There's an addenda 85.3, accept and file report on parkland dedication and in lieu fees and park impact fee rates as recommended by the Director of Parks, Open Space and Cultural Services. There's a board memo printout. There's a fee study. Park, it, park impact fees and example scenarios. Uh, there's an addenda 85.4, approve agreements with friends of Santa Cruz County Parks in the amount of $220,000 and the Tannery World Dance and Cultural Center in the amount of $83,491 for virtual and outdoor COVID-19 compliant recreational activities and authorize the parks director to sign the agreements and associated documents as recommended by the Director of Parks, Open Space and Cultural Services. There's a board memo, there's an agreement with the tannery, there's agreement with the Friends of Santa Cruz County Parks, there's an ADM 29 for the tannery, tannery agreement, and there's an ADM 29 Friends of Santa Cruz County Parks agreement. Finally, there's an addenda 85.5, Accept the recommendation from the Santa Cruz, Count, Santa Cruz Sheriff's 
Office and Health Services Agency to select California Forensic Medical Group to provide behavioral health services at the county jail effective July 1, 2021. Approve the amendment to an agreement with the California Forensic Medical Group in the amount of $1.7 million for corrections behavioral health services for a new contract amount of $6,960,318 and direct the Health Services Agency and the Sheriff's Office to return in May 2022 with an annual report as recommended by the Director of Health Services and the Sheriff Coroner. There's a board memo printout, there's an amendment to the California Forensic Medical Group Agreement, and there's an ADM 29 per amendment as well. That concludes the agenda and the corrections to the agenda. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there any announcement by board members of items removed from the consent uh, to the regular agenda? Seeing none, we will go to the public comment period. Uh, Stephanie, do you want to uh, announce that uh, it's Spanish as well? Thank you, Chair. Just a moment. Now is the time for public comment. This announcement will repeat in Spanish. Este anuncio se repetirá en español. If you would like to make a comment in Spanish, we have a translator available to assist. Speakers are limited to two minutes. At the end of this time, your microphone will automatically be muted. Members of the public may speak to an item on the consent agenda or items within the Board of Supervisors jurisdiction not appearing on the agenda. To comment on a regular item, please wait until the presentation is heard. Ahora es el tiempo que la Junta de Supervisores recibirá comentario del público. Si gustaría dar su comentario en español, tenemos un traductor disponible para asistir. Los oradores están limitados a dos minutos. Al fin de este tiempo, su micrófono se silenciará automáticamente. Miembros del público pueden hablar sobre cualquier tema de la agenda de consentimiento o temas que no aparecen en la agenda que caen debajo de la jurisdicción de la Junta. Comentarios sobre temas de la agenda regular se recibirá al fin de la presentación de este tema. Thank you, Chair. And we have three members of the public that would like to make a comment. Okay. Uh, do you have two minutes to comment on uh, items that if you're not able to attend later on the agenda today or that you uh, items that are not on the agenda but uh, under the jurisdiction of the County Board of Supervisors? Uh, you have two minutes to comment. Uh, go ahead, Stephanie, please. Ms. Cabrera. Call in user one. Your microphone is available. And as a reminder to those calling in by phone, it is star six to unmute yourself. This is Marilyn Garrett. Am I on? Yes, Marilyn. Okay. I'm going to quote from an article that's on Mercola.com, Dr. Mercola. It's titled, Researcher, We Made a Big Mistake on COVID-19 Vaccine. Story at a Glance. Canadian immunologist and vaccine researcher Byron Brittle has gained access to Pfizer's biodistribution study from the Japanese regulatory agency. The research previously unseen demonstrates a huge problem with all COVID-19 vaccines. The assumption that vaccine developers have been working with is that the mRNA in the vaccines would primarily remain in and around the vaccination site. Pfizer's data, however, shows the mRNA and subsequent spike protein are widely distributed within the body in hours. This is a serious problem as the spike protein is a toxin shown to cause cardiovascular and neurological damage. It also has reproductive toxicity and Pfizer's biodistribution data shows it accumulates in women's ovaries. 
Once in your blood circulation, the spike protein binds to platelet receptors and the cells that line your blood vessels. When that happens, it can cause platelets to clump together, resulting in blood clots and or abnormal bleeding. Pfizer documents submitted to the European Medicines Agency also show the company failed to follow industry standard quality management practices during preclinical toxicology studies and that key studies did not meet good laboratory practice standards. Carol, your microphone is available. Good morning. I'd like to continue on the public comment that I was talking about last week. I would really like to urge the board um, to meet today with Gail Newell and um, Dr. Ferris Sabah, and let's remove all these COVID restrictions around the kids going to school in the fall. Um, to do anything less is a violation of these kids' constitutional rights under the U.S. Constitution and the California Constitution. And to illustrate that point, um, I wanted to let you know about a recent lawsuit that was filed in LA County by a group of parents. And um, uh, California law requires children to attend school and it also guarantees them a free public education as a core constitutional right. And by having these COVID restrictions, you're excluding groups of people from those core constitutional rights. Um, this lawsuit... Um, is the first of its kind in California federal court regarding the targeting of our school children with illegal and unnecessary COVID mandates. Um, despite the legal, the parents' refusal to submit to the routine invasive PCR tests of their children, the forced downloading and use of the Microsoft app daily pass to collect and disseminate their children's private health data and covering their faces all day while in school results in LAUSD excluding healthy children and thousands of healthy children from attending school. And what's worse is, you know, it's really affecting the disadvantaged and the poor in our community. It's the, the kids that are doing okay, that are in good homes, they can probably deal with this okay. But these poor children that live in a disadvantaged home, you're making it even worse for them. They need to have full and equal access to school. And I want you to meet with them today to get this removed. Mila, your microphone is available. Hello, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I would like to, again, remind the Board of Supervisors about the issue, ongoing issue with the Behavioral Health Division, that inappropriate services for my daughter, who refused to refer my daughter to get services from San Andreas, and because she is autistic. And my daughter has visible teenager's mentality that she maintained, especially after traumatic brain injury in 2010. And uh, ever since, uh, I was not able to help my daughter to get appropriate therapy because of behavioral health division, who not noted right away, you know, that my daughter could be easy client for them and they can manipulate her and use her. Today at the 6 a.m., 6.30, I'm sorry, a.m., my daughter again knocked my door because she was staying in the woods. She was evicted on June 10th. Nobody was taken care of. And this is another issue, behavioral health, behavioral health division using artistic nature of my daughter so they can take an advantage and do nothing and claim that she is adult by ages. This is so horrible and it has to stop. Why my daughter walking around with the toys in her hands? She came to me with the two toys in her hands, okay, dirty and hungry. When is going to be ended? I spoke with Manu yesterday. He assured me that it's under control. So yes, Behavioral Health Division will say all the time that they keep under control. So the, what they keep under control 
control, they keep alienation. So my daughter isolated from normal society, from family, and this is very dangerous. This is road to slow murder. Please, slow murder. Stop it. Caller 1999, your microphone is available. Good morning, my name is James Ewing Whitman. It is June 29th, 2021. Can I be heard? Yes. Thank you. I'm not gonna read what I wrote earlier this morning. Maybe I will later. I'll read what I wrote recently. I like at least 25, at least 85% of what comes out of the mouths of the current board. I dislike at least 85% of what the board actually does as elected and chosen leaders. Do I wish I had days to explain why I don't care for the decades of planning these boards have completed to become expendable puppets of the Bolshevik CCC, CCP genocide plans for USA Incorporated? Has society become so fake that the truth actually bothers people? I find the Mr. Smith effect from the film Matrix rampant in US society. Why do so many seem like spray paint cans with a loud rattle even if the brain seems so empty? Why? Frequencies. It all has to do with frequencies as everything can, as anything that can be done with a pill can be done a thousand times faster with frequencies. Yet from wireless frequency studies where the test subjects were referred to as monkeys, these human experiments were further used from their origination in Japan after the end of World War II in 1945. What has been learned is that with the introduction of biological agents from geoengineering, i.e. chemtrails, is that organisms can be inhaled and be untestable until frequencies magnify their strengths millions of times. Thank you. There are no other speakers for public comment. Okay, uh, we will um, go to item number six, uh, action on consent items 15 through 85. I will start with Supervisor Manu Koenig. If there are any comments that you have on the consent agenda. Thank you, Chair. Uh, on item 30, I just wanna thank Dave Reed in the uh, OR3 office and Pia Levine from the planning department uh, for clarifying um, this item for me. So it's the uh, allowing deferral of geologic reports to support fire survivor rebuild efforts. Uh, I did hear uh, some concern from the public that we were putting the cart before the horse by allowing um, an exception to geologic reports before receiving uh, a, a building permit. Um, but I'm well assured uh, that the process being undertaken well, um, it will, will minimize any risk uh, for folks actually rebuilding uh, in the zone affected by the CZU fire. So thank you. Uh, item 32, the status report on the American Rescue Plan. Great to see that uh, we're receiving about $80,000 more in funds from the federal government. And I'm looking forward to seeing the map for broadband that ISD is preparing uh, for our allocation towards that. Uh, we've heard a lot in the first district from folks we're losing their cruise IO DSL service. Uh, and in fact, we have a correspondence to that effect today uh, from Mr. John Crayford, uh, or sorry, Cray Croft uh, in our written correspondence. And um, it's, I think if the pandemic has taught us one thing, it's just that uh, internet is now a vital service. Uh, item 33, the transition to Board of Supervisors meetings to a hybrid model beginning August 10th, 2021. Uh, it's fantastic that we'll continue to allow remote comment by the public, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all in person in August. On item 38, accepting final costs for the Heart of Soquel Parkway, I just want to thank uh, General Services and, and Parks, uh, again, on a great job here. It has really added to uh, the um, environment in Soquel Village, and uh, uh, this is part of a larger revitalization project for the area, and I encourage all of you to go down and visit it if you haven't already. Uh, and finally, on item 39, replacement of a leaking fuel vault at the Loma Prieta Volunteer Fire Station. Uh, this is definitely much needed. Glad to see we're addressing it as the emergency it is, uh, and that we'll also be better accommodating the fueling operation as we do so. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Friend. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a couple of brief items. I'd like to acknowledge Public Works on their work on item 76 in regards to upcoming storm damage repair. It's in multiple districts, but just specifically the San Andreas and Browns Valley 
uh, work that's being done, uh, as well as along with Supervisor Caput, the work that's being done on Mount Madonna that our two districts uh, both share. Also, just off of that today, um, I understand that Valencia School Road was at least reopened to traffic as they continue to do work on it, but that's a remarkably fast turnaround of work. Um, the Assistant Director Steve Wiesner and his crew deserves a lot of credit for turning that around. That was, a, as you may remember, there was a pretty catastrophic failure that occurred just a few months ago, and they got it reopened in time for fire season. So that's really a lot of kudos to Public Works on uh, getting that reopened today. Um, in, in addition, the item that we brought forward with Chair McPherson uh, regarding the uh, pre-child program, I understand that, that there is probably some good news so far in the, in the legislature's second pass of the budget here, but we need to keep up this advocacy to ensure that probation gets what they need in advance of this. I appreciate Supervisor McPherson working on uh, this with our office in order to provide this advocacy and would appreciate the, um, the support of our colleagues on this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Supervisor Coonerty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I have no comments. I just want to note, I mean, there's almost uh, 90 items here just on consent. Uh, we're certainly giving uh, everyone a lot of work to do uh, as we uh, uh, have a uh, one month break from meetings, but uh, thank you everybody for their work over this challenging fiscal year. Thank you. Supervisor Kappen. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, McPherson. Yeah, just a quick comment on a couple of items. Uh, 33, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing people in person also uh, with that all virtual uh, Board of Supervisors meeting uh, transitioning into a type of a hybrid model like we had before. And then also item number 34, uh, looking forward to seeing uh, some uh, remodeling done uh, with the uh, uh, county building on Freedom Boulevard in Watsonville, and that'll be uh, it'll be good to see uh, that opening up uh, also. And uh, the remodel should go very well. Uh, item 76 uh, was already mentioned, and um, I want to thank Public Works also for the work uh, they've been doing on. Uh, Mount Madonna Road and um, working with uh, Supervisor uh, Friend on getting stuff done where our two districts overlap. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, I have a couple comments on item number 18, uh, the parks fee ordinance. Uh, thanks again to our parks department for bringing these ordinance improvements to the board. Uh, I think this approach is going to be much more straightforward and countywide in terms of its impact. Uh, very positive mood move. Um, on item 31, the operations plan, I want to thank our CEO, Carlos Palacios, and his whole team for managing all of this during this pandemic and the fire that we've gone through. The fact that we have accomplished so much during this year is commendable. And I, more importantly, I, it shows that our county is adaptable uh, and that we can pivot and think creatively in the face of adversity. And believe me, we've all had plenty of that this year, the last two years. Uh, thank you to all the departments for their work on meeting these goals and uh, just for, again, for uh, our CAO for putting this strategic plan and now the operations plan that I just discussed in place so we can target what we, what our top, what are our top priorities and go after them. And we've accomplished over 70% of them with uh, the pandemic, the fires and et cetera. A truly remarkable achievement to everybody, all our employees and the county uh, staff in general. It's just uh, really a terrific uh, accomplishment. And we're going to be moving onward and upward uh, further as we progress now in our recovery efforts. Um, on uh, item number 68, the Boulder Creek bench doesn't sound like a big thing. But even though uh, this may seem like a small thing, uh, I want to thank the Department of Public Works and the Boulder Creek Business Association for its work on getting this bench in downtown Boulder Creek. Uh, so much of what happens in uh, uh, this uh, San Jose Valley community uh, on it's uh, contingent on Caltrans because they are responsible for Highway 9, which is the main street for San Jose Valley. And it, uh, not too many years ago, it took us years to get new garbage cans there, but we did it, or you did it in the San Lorenzo Valley. And having the, the board support for this simple bench demonstrates to Caltrans that we are truly committed 
to as a county to supporting these rural areas. And I really want to appreciate it. It means a lot to that community of Boulder Creek. Uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda. I'll move the recommended actions. Second. I'll second the, either one. Call the roll, please. Supervisor Koenig? Aye. Friend? Aye. Coonerty? Aye. Caput? Aye. McPherson? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the regular agenda, number uh, item number seven, to consider adopting a resolution authorizing issuance of bonds, approving and directing the execution of a fiscal agent agreement and escrow deposit and trust agreement, and authorize the sale of bonds and take related actions as outlined in the memorandum of the auditor, controller, treasurer, tax collector. Uh, there's a resolution authorizing uh, bonds of uh, Santa Cruz, a bond purchase agreement, escrow agreement, Fiscal agent uh, agreement on Santa Cruz County 2021 Consolidated Reassessment District 2021. Uh, we will uh, move to this item. Uh, let's see, excuse me, to, uh, I think Mr. Plosser, so are you going to, or Edith Driscoll, excuse me, our county auditor, controller, treasurer, tax collector, please present. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Chair McPherson and members of the board. As stated, the item before you now is a resolution authorizing the issuance of bonds for the just approved consolidated reassessment district. The new consolidated district was explained on item 66 of your current consent agenda that you just approved. The purpose of financing is to take advantage of the lower interest rates available in the current market related to three outstanding series of original assessment district bonds. The savings from the refinancing of the bonds will be passed on to the property owners in their future assessments. At a point, uh, as a point of reference, earlier this morning, we were actually already selling other bonds. We sold the previously approved Plastomer bonds this morning, and I'm pleased to report we were able to sell them at a very appealing interest rate. With us today is Suzanne Harold, the municipal advisor for the county, who will present a short PowerPoint to fully explain uh, this bond item. If we could have the PowerPoint, please. Just a moment, she's still being elevated. Thank you. Good morning, Chair McPherson and members of the board. Um, I'm Suzanne Harrell, your municipal advisor, and I'm just trying to see if the PowerPoint has been um, put up on the screen yet. I can't tell from where I'm sitting. It's not on the screen yet, but it, I believe Give it a moment. Okay. Okay. Well, I think the last time I saw you, I told you I would keep interest rates low and I'm still doing my part. <laughs> we appreciate that. All right, the PowerPoint's now up. Great. Uh, so if we could um, advance to the next slide. So as Ms. Driscoll mentioned, the county at the request of property owners has formed um, several small assessment districts in the past um, to fund uh, water and sewer type of infrastructure. Um, each of these assessment districts has uh, issued limited obligation improvement bonds to finance those improvements that were a benefit uh, to those specific property owners. So if we could advance. Uh, the debt payments on those improvement bonds are charged directly to the property owners. And by consolidating some of these smaller assessment districts, we can actually achieve some savings um, for the property owners by refinancing the existing improvement bonds. And as noted, the consolidation of uh, three of these outstanding assessment districts was approved as item number 66 on the consent agenda. Uh, next slide. Um, as far as the bonds that are outstanding, there's about a million three fifty um, to be outstanding as of September. Uh, 2021. You can see that in, there's not very many uh, parcels in each assessment district, um, and the interest rates range uh, from 5.1% to 6.44%. The expected interest rate on the refunding bonds is 2.5%. Uh, 
so that's a significant savings. And then all the costs to issue the bonds will be paid from the bonds. Um, there will be no uh, net counting cost. Next slide. Um, this is a really exciting slide. This shows the average annual reduction in the assessment levy each year for the property owners. Assessment District 06-01 um, has 14 years of payments remaining, and hopefully their uh, reduction will exceed $200 a year. Uh, assessment District 0801, their savings will exceed $300 a year, and 09-01 their savings will exceed $400 a year. So that's quite a significant savings for all of these individual um, property owners. Next slide. So the recommendation today is to approve the resolution and the resolution authorizes uh, one, the issuance of bonds and the execution of several documents related to the bond issue that which are the fiscal agent agreement, the escrow agreement, and um, a variety of related documents. It also sets parameters for the sale of the bonds. So the amount cannot exceed $1.5 million. The underwriting discount or the commission to the underwriter cannot exceed 2% of the par amount of the bonds. The final maturity cannot exceed the final maturity of the original bonds, which is September 2, 2039. And we must meet the savings requirements of the refunding bond law. And that is that there are savings um, that are realized by all of the property owners. Um, in every year. And with that, I'll turn it over to for any questions. Thank you and congratulations for a job well done. Uh, very much needed in uh, Rolling Woods area and uh, district and Orchard Drive and so forth. Uh, very well done. Are there any comments uh, from the pub or from supervisors? Seeing none, are there any comments from the public? There's one speaker. Call in user two. Your microphone is available. Hi, this is Marilyn Garrett. And you say there's savings to the property owner. My basic understanding of bonds over the years is that it takes years to pay off. There is high interest and lots of debt. And I question the value of bonds. That's, that's my only comment. So what you stated seems to contradict um, my understanding. Um, thank you. There are no other speakers for public comment. Thank you. I'll uh, return it to the board for action and just say uh, this is going to save the pop property owners money in the long run. And it's uh, very well, very well done in getting this, uh, these great rates for the property owners that are in these, these areas. Thank you. Yeah. Just, just a quick question. Yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. Oh, I was going to make a motion. So go ahead, Greg. Oh, real quick. Uh, uh, hi, Edith. How are you Good doing? Good morning. Good. How's your son doing in the, uh, his studies? Excellent, thank you. <laughs> all right, good. I want, to, I want to thank you for all your hard work and uh, uh, special attention you've given to South County with different issues and things like that. On, on a refinance, I'm, I'm just curious, is this like a, a home mortgage refinance? Uh, are there points? Uh, is it a no par? Uh, type refi uh, refinance or is there money that's uh, put on the end of the loan and extending the years on the loan? Uh, if I can go ahead and redirect that to our financial advisor, Ms. Harrell. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Skull. Um, there will be no extension of the original maturity of the bonds. However, there are some cost of issuance that are incorporated into the issue amount. Um, however, they are more than offset by the savings generated by the lower interest rate. And the current uh, interest rate is how much? So they average from about 5.1% to 6.44%. So I think the average is about 5.7%. Uh, so they'll be going down to 25 right? That's right. Right. That's our and estimated that's, price. Uh, that, uh, 
I don't think we're going to see these low interest rates uh, uh, this low for a long time. So uh, thanks for looking into this. Yeah, we have looked at it from time to time, but the interest rates were, were just not low enough. Um, but now they are. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Members of the board? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, I'll just say uh, maybe I've been doing this too long, but nothing makes me happier than a good uh, bond refinancing. <laughs> uh, getting money right back to the taxpayers and just not paying uh, interest to, to big, big financial institutions. Win-win uh, and putting. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I appreciate all the effort, and I'm willing to move the recommended actions. Second. Second by uh, Supervisor Koenig. Please call the roll. Supervisor Koenig. Aye. Friend. Aye. Coonerty. Aye. Caput. Aye. McPherson. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, we'll go to item number eight, a public hearing to accept the comments and any protests on the renewal of the Santa Cruz County Tourism Marketing District, or TMD. Accept and file the amended TMD plan. Consider adopting a resolution renewing the TMD and take related actions as outlined in the memorandum of the county administrative officers. Officer, uh, consent from cities of Watsonville, Capitol, Santa Cruz, and Scotts Valley for the Santa Cruz County uh, TMD renewal. TMD management district plan, the TMD managed district plan changes. Uh, there was some strikeout and underlines and then a resolution for the trans uh, tourism marketing district. Um, is, uh, I think uh, Melody Serena was going to present on this. Uh, good morning, members of the board. Melody Serino, WBCAO. I just want to make sure you can see the screen because I can't see it from my vantage point. So yes, today's great. Today's item is the seven-year renewal of the tourism marketing district, including an amendment as discussed at your June 8th meeting. And I just have a couple of quick slides here. So I want to give you a little reminder of the Santa Cruz uh, County Tourism Marketing District is a special district. Hotels collect and submit a special assessment, which is paid by the customer as part of their nightly fee. This provides funding for ongoing tourism and marketing efforts focused on generating overnight visitation to Santa Cruz County. The original TMD started in 2010 and was renewed for five years. And then in 2015, the TMD was renewed for seven years. The current TMD expires on 630 of 2022. And so this new renewal would be for another seven years uh, with a renewal until 630, 2029. The current TMD raises approximately $2.6 million. 73% of the budget is used for marketing and promotion of Santa Cruz County. And then 25% cent for 25 for general operation. There's a 2% set aside and a 1% for administrative fees. The renewal of the TMD is expected to raise about $2.9 million with the proposed fee increases. So this is the renewal process. It began in May with the resolution of intention, and this is the third and final meeting required to renew the district plan. Per section 36620.5 of the Streets and Highways Codes, a county may not form a district within the territorial jurisdiction of a city without the consent of the city council. The city of Scotts Valley had previously requested the continuation of exemption for nonprofits, nonprofits which impacts 1440 multiversity, and the replacement of that language in the plan has been included in today's materials. The cities of Scotts Valley, Capitola, Santa Cruz, and Watsonville have all approved their resolutions of consent, including the amended language. These are the recommended actions for today. The county clerk has determined that at this time, no protests have been received. And so accordingly, there is not yet a majority protest which would preclude district renewal. This public hearing represents the last opportunity for lodging protests. There's a team available to answer questions, should you have them. Okay. Does that complete your presentation? That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, we will uh, open this to the public hearing. Uh, are there any comments from the public? 
There are no members of the public wishing to speak to this item. Okay. Um, spoke to soon. One just rose their hand. Oh, okay. Caller 1999, your microphone is available. Caller 1999. Um, good morning. This is James Ewing Whitman. Can I be heard? Yes. Okay. Excellent, thank you. On this morning's items eight through 13, items eight, 12, and 13 state under the brief explanations of the items this. Regarding public hearing items, if any person challenges an action taken on the foregoing matter matters in court, they may be limited to only raising those issues raised at the public hearing described in this notice or in written correspondence delivered to the Board of Supervisors at or prior to the public hearing. Um, personally, I haven't opened up to read all of these items and all the little fine details that are there. Um, I'm just, I may do so in the future, so I want that noted in public comments. Thank you very much. There are no other speakers for public comment. Okay, um, I'll close the public hearing and return it to the board and uh, ask for any comments from Supervisor Friend. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Let me just appreciate Mr. Reno's work and also uh, the work of Visit Santa Cruz and Ms. Ivy. Uh, you know, the fact that this was overwhelmingly supported by um, all the hotels and, and actually a, a number of the other service industry um, supporters in this community shows how important people find the TMD to be. And so I'm, I'm very supportive of this. I think that, well, look, we're both an agricultural and tourism-based economy. It's essential that we market this information out. As you can see, people are starting to come back. We need it for local jobs. Uh, we need it for really the character and quality of life within this community. And so I'm fully supportive of this and I'm prepared to move the recommended actions. Okay, uh, we'll go come back to you. Any other comments from the board, uh, Supervisor Coonerty? I'll just second that and both the comments and the and the motion. Okay, uh, I don't know if there's any other, I just have a small comment, but Supervisor Caput, do you have anything? Yeah, to... just, uh, uh, it's really good to see uh, that we're gonna actually have people coming here to visit. I mean, uh, the uh, tourism is a big part of uh, Santa Cruz County. We don't get a lot in South County, but uh, it helps the overall uh, budget and everything uh, for the whole county. So uh, it's, it's gonna be really nice to see the beaches opening up, the hotels opening up, uh, the restaurants and everything. Everybody will uh, benefit from this. Thank you. Hey, uh, Supervisor, I Koenig, did you want to make a comment? No. Uh, just you know, great work by all, and here's hoping for a banner year for uh, for tourism. Yeah, I I, um, I agree with that, and uh, I want to thank Visit Santa Cruz County, uh, especially their CAO uh, Maggie Ivy for all the work they put into this renewal. I'm glad we're able to move forward collectively on this, and I'm glad, grateful to our public health situation with the pandemic is improving uh, that we might see tourism come back. It's an important ingredient to our economy and for the job picture, as was mentioned by Supervisor Friend. We have a motion by Supervisor Friend, second by Coonerty. Uh, please call the roll. Supervisor Koenig. Aye. Friend. Coonerty. Aye. Caput. Aye. McPherson. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, item number nine is to consider approval and concept of an ordinance setting in the sewer buy-in connection fee for two parcels owned by Pass Simple Incorporated, APN 060092-01 and dash 17 into the county service area number 10, Roland Woods, and schedule the ordinance for second reading and final adoption on August 10th, 2021, as outlined in the memorandum of the Deputy CEO, Director of Public Works. We have an ordinance amending uh, ordinance 5246, uh, Rolling Woods uh, County Service Area 10, ordinance amending ordinance 5246 again. Uh, there's a strikeout and underline. I believe Ashley Trio is going to be uh, presenting on this. Hey, thank you, Chairperson. Ashley Trujillo, Senior Engineer for the Department of Public Works, representing the Rolling Woods County Service Area. 
House of Tampa Incorporated has completed the local agency formation commission annexation for two parcels into the county service area number 10 and now seeks to connect these parcels to the sewer system. This requires a revision of ordinance number 5246 to set the new sewer buy-in connection fees. These annexed parcels contain a pro shop, McKenzie's Bar and Grill, office buildings, a cart barn, and Holland's House restaurant. And a map of the area was included in the linked LAFCO um, annexation report. Public Works has determined that there is capacity in the existing sewer mains for this connection. Staff has worked with County's bond consultant, Suzanne Harrell, to determine the buy-in costs for Casa Tiempo. Casa Tiempo must pay $38,913.39 to buy into the CSA 10 system and $10,404.93 to buy into the Orchard Drive Assessment District, within which the new sewer connection will be made. It is therefore recommended that the board approve in concept an ordinance setting the sewer buy-in connection fee for the two parcels owned by Pasa Tiempo Incorporated into County Service Area Number 10, Rolling Woods, and schedule the ordinance for second reading and final adoption on August 10th, 2021. And I'm available for questions. Thank you. Um, we'll open it up to the public. Are there any comments from the public? There are no speakers to this item, Chair. Okay, we will turn to the board. Um, Supervisor um, Coonerty, do you have any comments on this or does anybody on the board have any comments on this? Pretty straightforward. Entertain a motion to accept. So moved. Coonerty. Second. Moved by Coonerty, second by Friend. Uh, please call the roll. Supervisor Koenig. Aye. Friend. Aye. Coonerty. Aye. Caput. Aye. McPherson. Aye. Thank you, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, item number 10 is to consider approval of the Measure D five-year plan for 2021-22 uh, fiscal year and take related actions as outlined in the memorandum of the Deputy CEO of Public Works. Uh, we have the 2021 Measure D five-year plan and I believe Steve Wiesner from the Public Works Department is going to be presenting on this. Yes, good morning, Chair. Um, this is Steve Wiesner here. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, I am going to go ahead and share my screen here. Let me know when you all can see that. We got it. We can see it. Great, fantastic. Well, good morning, Chair McPherson, uh, board members, CAO, and members of the public. Uh, my name is Steve Wiesner, Assistant Director of Public Works. Um, and here with me today is Casey Carlson, our senior civil engineer who's in charge of the county's payment management program. Um, and I'll be giving a brief Measure D five-year plan update this morning. So as a reminder, um, Measure D uh, was a countywide half cent sales tax measure that was passed by our voters in November 2016. Um, and Measure D provides a 30-year funding source for transportation projects countywide. Uh, the county's road share uh, is estimated this next year to be $3.1 million. Um, and, and that's actually a significant improvement over what our uh, forecast was for 2020, um, which assumed impacts from COVID. Um, so it looks looking pretty good for next year. Um, as part of the ordinance, uh, the annual requirements include producing a five-year plan update, um, which is approved in a public hearing um, by the Board of Soups, which is why we're here today. And um, also as a reminder um, for, for the public, when Measure D was passed, uh, we, uh, we did a, a survey of our co various communities throughout the county's unincorporated area. And the three top priorities um, for the community was maintenance and repair of our county roadways, um, along with some neighborhood resurfacing projects and some safety projects as well. So I'm just gonna do just a quick brief history. Um, this is um, our fourth year of implement implementation now in 2021. Um, we had three years of projects that are already been completed. In District 1, we were able to deliver projects uh, up, up in the SoCal San Jose area, um, the Miller Hill area. Um, the next year in 2019, we did several roads down in the Live Oak area. 
And this past year, um, we were able to hit some of the roads up in the Thurber Lane area. In District 2, um, we actually had some really nice projects, one down uh, in La Selva. We were able to do many of the roads down in La Selva Beach area. Uh, 2019 brought us uh, some roads in the Rio Del Mar Flats area. Um, and then this past year, we were able to com complete um, several roads in the Sea Cliff neighborhood area. District 3 um, has a little bit less percentage of the roads uh, compared to the rest of the other districts in our county. And so it takes a little while to build up some money to do some significant work out there. But in 2018 and 2019, we were able to complete all of Martin Road. And um, we're now um, working towards saving up enough funds uh, where we can do a significant repair on Swanton in the future. In District 4, uh, the first year of Measure D funds actually were needed to repair a critically damaged bridge down in South County on Casserly Road. And we were able to make those repairs in 2018. And, and again, because so many less roads down in South County, Takes a little while to build up a bank, but in this last couple of years, um, we're able to complete Lakeview Drive. And in District 5, um, going along with neighborhood resurfacing in our downtown core areas, in 2018, we're able to do a bunch of work in Boulder Creek, next year in Ben Loman, and then this past year in downtown Felton. And the 2021 Measure D project is underway this year. Um, we're already out there paving roads, and I'm sure you, you all have seen it and heard about it. In District 1, um, we're doing a slew of streets in the Merlin Way area off of Soquel San Jose. District 2, we're working down in the Coralitos area. District 3, um, we're actually banking funds this year towards that future Swanton Road project. District 4, we're completing um, the last northern half of um, Lakeview Road down in South County. And then District 5, we've moved back up to Boulder Creek and we're starting to get some more of the outlying neighborhood streets in Boulder Creek. So it's been very successful. Um, this program has been fantastic for, for our communities and for the county. We're able to finally start getting out there and doing some significant resurfacing on, on our streets out there. Um, and so what you have before you today is um, the recommended actions are to adopt the attached Measure D five-year plan for the 21-22 fiscal year and to authorize Public Works to submit a copy of the approved board package to the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission. And so with that, I'm happy to take any questions and then I'll just have the public note that um, there's, a, there's a URL up um, on this slide and, and that's the webpage um, in the Public Works website where you can find all kinds of information about our resurfacing and pavement management program. And there's very specific information about Measure D and the work we're doing this summer. Um, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Um, uh, go to the public, any questions from the public? Just a moment, there are no speakers to this item, Chair. Okay, return it uh, to the board. Uh, start with Supervisor Caput on this one. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, Steve, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you, Greg. All right. Uh, quick questions. I don't expect you to go into detail or anything because uh, we can work that out later. But um, Murphy Crossing, it looks like we're going to be out. Actually, we're going to be able to do something there. Um, so uh, will it be a quick fix or is it going to be, uh, uh, you know, where we don't have to go back there in a, couple, in a year or two? Yeah, you know, we have been trying to maintain Murphy's Crossing as best as possible with our regular patching program, um, but we are um, aware that it needs some significant um, uh, rebuilding, really. Um, the road's pretty well shot, and so it's going to take a fairly large project out there, and we're going to be building funds up in a bank for a future project there. Okay, and then uh, Paulson Road, real quick, uh, can you explain that? That's been a problem for ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Paulson is also in need of some serious resurfacing and work as well. And that's actually going to be the next one that's on slate for District 4 for Measure D funds. Um, we are building a bank up for that one, and we expect to deliver that project in a couple of years. Okay, is that is that over the, by the bend over by Whiting, or is that farther up north? Um, it'll be actually the entire length of Paulson. Okay. And then uh, real quick, I guess uh, the money for Houlihan and Highway 52 is... Uh, that's different money than uh, Measure D money, right? That'll be Cal, uh, Cal Trans, uh, State of California. 
That's right. It's a, it doesn't have any Measure D funding on it, um, but it's got several other funding sources. And we've been working, as you know, for many years to uh, fund that project. And it looks like it's going to come to fruition in this next year. Okay. And real quick, uh, uh, it looks outstanding out there on Lakeview. Uh, I just uh, drove out there the other day. And uh, uh, it's a wonderful job. All they're going to do now is put the striping in the middle of the road. Uh, to separate uh, uh, eastbound and westbound lanes. It looks great. Uh, quick, last question, real quick. The roundabout on Lakeview, that's, uh, is that scheduled to be put in pretty soon? So that's a Caltrans project. That's on Highway 129. And I do believe they are scheduled to go to construction within this next year as well. Okay, so there'll actually be a roundabout on the highway. There will be. Um, it's, a, it's a unique application for a roundabout, but I think because of the high speeds out there and some of the collision history they have, um, the state felt that it was necessary to put some type of a, a traffic calming um, measure right at that location. And um, it looks like it's going to work. Okay, I hope so. Uh, yeah, it's going to take a lot of work. And, uh, the, the plan is already put together, though, right? Or they're still working on the plan. No, they actually do have them put together, and I think they're putting the final touches on them to get it out to construction. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make a couple of comments. Um, the top priority uh, getting 30% of the Measure D funding was for local roads, and uh, we're getting at them as quickly as possible. The Public Works Department has done a fantastic job with uh, the, the funding it has. I think people have noticed they they appreciate that, but they want, they want it in front of their place too, and we're just going area by area, and uh, we can, we're going as quickly as we can, and Public Works has really done a fantastic job of uh, measuring uh, this plan over the course of the past several years. Um, I'm glad that we have a better than expected revenue projections for this program next year too. It, it helps and if people want to get a better idea of, of what's uh, scheduled for this next year, they can go to that link that you just mentioned. Uh, we might mention it again at the end of the presentation, but uh, thank you very much to Public Works and to the voters who approved Measure D, more than two thirds of them approved that in 2016. Uh, Supervisor Koenig. Yes, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, Assistant Director Wiesner, uh, for all the work in Live Oak and SoCal, uh, and to everyone on the Public Works staff. Um, you know, $3.1 million a year is certainly better than nothing, um, but we, there's just still so many more needs. I mean, I think the uh, our budget highlighted that we need an additional $24 million a year uh, if we're actually going to keep up with road maintenance in this county. Um, so I think it's really incumbent on this board to figure out new funding strategies to start to fill that gap, or, or we're just going to be dealing with the persistent underfunding of our roads. And so uh, as exciting as it is to be able to fund some of these projects, it was definitely painful reviewing all the needs in the first district and having to uh, choose some over others, and um, including you know leaving behind some projects that are are desperately needed. Uh, you know, where I'm prioritizing funding in the first district includes uh, Thurber Lane and Fairway Drive. Those are both um, really some single access points for very large communities up in the uh, Santa Cruz, low Santa Cruz mountains there uh, with over about a thousand residents in each neighborhood. So uh, very essential. Uh, and also Portola Drive, I would set aside some funding uh, in order to do a, a resurfacing project there. It gets about 16,000 trips a day. Uh, and we're doing a temporary pop-up uh, project right now. Again, temporary, just about 25 total days on Portola Drive to test out some streetscape improvements there um, so that we could potentially um, do restriping uh, or reconfiguration of the street in conjunction with resurfacing. Uh, that's best practice that we've seen come out of uh, areas like San Jose, where they recently built 10 miles of protected bike lanes within a year for one and a half million dollars by timing the projects like that. Um, so it's, it's been a great opportunity to, to, to pop up to test out some of these streetscape improvements. Finally, I just want to point out uh, within the District 1 funding, we've got uh, $1.5 million set aside for rail trail segment 9. Now, um, actually with Measure D, you know, we had the 30% for local roads and a separate amount for the rail trail and active transportation. Um, and you know, while I haven't pulled this funding for uh, the one and a half million dollars, um, you know, it does give me pause. It, uh, you know, I, I'm left it in the budget because uh, it's part of an active grant application with partners, including the city of Santa Cruz. 
Um, and, you know, I think we need to see how it plays out, but we also need to be building a trail that we can afford. I mean, one and a half million dollars, that's over a year of the resurfacing budget for the first district. And, you know, we can't be pulling money off of roads to build a trail. We, we have enough money to build the trail with the amount set aside in Measure D originally uh, and in, enshrined in the initiative uh, and, and approved by the voters. Um, so we really need to be cautious going forward um, that we don't rob Peter to pay Paul, that we build a trail that we can afford, uh, as well as address the uh, resurfacing needs that are desperately uh, needed throughout the county. That's all my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Friend. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And let me just echo the appreciation of Public Works. And, and if you ever wanted an example of what can happen if Public Works actually received the funding they deserved, I think that, that you're seeing it with the little funding that they actually received through Measure D because they've made really significant progress. Uh, I know that there's a number of us on this board that worked very hard to ensure that Measure D uh, became a reality and we've been able to use it also as a leverage for state funding. It was an important part of the conversation even with the congested corridors funding from the state uh, recently. And there are roads that have been done in each of our districts that I know that uh, Supervisor McPherson and I, when when we were first got on, one of the conversations we had early on was people saying to us that these things hadn't been touched in 30 to 40 years and they didn't think that they would be touched. And uh, now some of these roads are being done and it's 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 quite a sight to, to just see uh, the appreciation of the community from, from the work that Public Works is doing. And by the way, they're also stretching these dollars. I mean, a lot of the roads that were originally presented, they've uh, found ways, negotiated hard on the contracts, found adjacency roads that weren't even initially listed, but they recognized they could do that road for another 25,000, 50,000, 75,000. They're making it stretch and really making a difference in these communities. But uh, it does show as as noted that that if, if additional funding could cut public works this way, I think that we'd make not just a larger dent on, on road improvements, but it, it goes to show that, that, that they know what to do when funds are presented to them, they, they get stuff done in that way. And it's on top of all the other work. I mean, we had an unprecedented amount of storm related damage a few years ago, over 120 million to public facilities that they're still building their way out of and SB1 funds are being used for. And then even this last year, which people thought were, were in a historic drought, we had massive storm related damage in my district that, that um, Mr. Wiesner has been working to get our way out of two with Valencia School Road and, and other damage. So it it's, we're never starting from an even perspective here. It's always additional things are put on public works on any given year, the fires, the floods, um, I guess the plague of locusts will be next. And then we just hope that measure D itself is actually able to do some of the scheduled work. I do have one question uh, for you, Mr. Wiesner. In regards to the five-year plan, it outlines specific roads, which I know has been very important historically uh, for us to ensure that the community have a sense I do, uh, though, recognize that, that things change, that, that we need to be flexible as an organization, uh, both as a board and as public works, that you have a, a CIP, that we, we look at roads that, and their needs. Is there any value in moving forward, uh, having a conversation about doing this on a year-to-year -year basis as opposed to a five-year basis, having additional flexibility provided to public works and the board in regards to uh, the roads that we're looking at? Um, yeah, you know, your point is well taken, Supervisor Friend. Um, you know, when we program roads to be done five years out, um, we really don't know what the cost of asphalt is going to be at that time and whether construction prices for labor are going to be up or down or what really the economic current economic state is going to be. And so we're giving it our best guesstimate um, based on existing prices today. And so um, it may make sense at some point. Right now, um, we've got more than five years worth of roads actually in the plan the way it sits today. Um, but at some point, it may make some sense. And if you'll note in the new um, updated plan, we've added a line item for each district that is a general road resurfacing programming line item. Now, we haven't started putting money into that bucket yet, but at some point, we may decide not to start, you know, to stop listing specific roads, maybe listing specific areas of the county and just start building up the funds that way. And, you know, we'll continue to work with each supervisor and with, uh, with each community to identify the needs and the priorities in those areas on an annual basis. But we are required by the ordinance that the RTC um, passed to provide them an, annu an annual update of the five-year plan. So we'll continue to do that. Um, but we do have a little bit of flexibility with regards to how, we, um, how, how our foresight is, is measured. Um, and we can strategize with each one of you as we move forward on that. Okay, we'd appreciate that work from Public Works letting us know what 
uh, we definitely don't want to take away flexibility or, or have you have a sense that you're locked into something when there may actually be something where we can get better bang for our buck on a year to year basis. I think that the community in general would agree that the more roads we, that can get done, the better, which also leads to the second part of this, which is that sometimes maybe we uh, need to do a better job both as a board, uh, well, as a board in communicating why roads are chosen. Uh, some Sometimes I'll have, well, actually every time that, that roads in a neighborhood are done, somebody will say, well, why was that chosen? It actually wasn't in that bad of shape, for example, on the, on the comparative side. And and I'll explain to people that that's actually one of the reasons why it was done. It's significantly cheaper to do a road that hasn't failed yet um, on a per mile or per square foot, ba- per square yard basis. And that it allows us, um, it's once equipment's mobilized, it's cheaper to do adjacent streets than it would be otherwise. And so there's there are things that, there's an art and a science to this, that, that we've got a limited number of money, uh, amount of money, but also that there's a rationale as to why some roads are done and sometimes and others aren't done at other times. And as evidenced in both my district as well as in one, four, well, actually in all the districts, that sometimes you have to bank money for these larger projects because it's a, it's basically an entire road rebuild. Uh, and that's a, a trade-off with the community that we can have that conversation that, that would you prefer to have one mile done on a major road in essence, or would you rather have uh, eight or 10 different residential roads done in the exact same year? And that's that's a, a tough conversation to have, but that's the world of trade-offs that we're in. And, and uh, those are the decisions that the board's making. But but I do feel that the community provides that outreach. And, and, and uh, I do think we could probably do a better job just communicating how or why roads are chosen on any given year. But again, thank you for your um, well over a 40 hour a week job, especially during the, the rainy season, Mr. Wiesner, and, and uh, looking forward to the projects continue to be done on this. Good. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, Supervisor Coonerty. Uh, I'll limit my comments. We're, we're, we're saving our pennies out there for Swanton Road uh, every year, and uh, we'll get there eventually. But uh, thank you for the work. It's a benefit countywide. Um, it's, we're a small county. People move across this county. Uh, and so it benefits us all to have roads that are, are maintained everywhere in Santa Cruz County. Thank you. Supervisor Catlin. He started with the comments, Mr. Chair. Oh, excuse me. I'm, yeah, okay. I'm going to get back. I'll entertain uh, yeah, a motion. Oh, never mind. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to accept the, uh, the five-year plan, Measure D five-year plan. I'll move the recommended action. Second. I'll second. Please call the roll. Thank you. And for the record, there are no public speakers to this item. Supervisor Koenig. Aye. Friend. Aye. Coonerty. Aye. Caput. Aye. McPherson? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, we'll go to item number 11 that has the Board of Directors of the Santa Cruz County Flood Control and Water Conservation District Zone 6. Consider adopting a resolution of intention to form the assessment district to fund the maintenance of the Rio de Mar Flats drainage improvements project and approve the engineer's report. Set uh, the public hearing on the formation of the proposed assessment district for August 24th. 2021 and take related actions as outlined in the memorandum of the district engineer, a resolution of intention to form the assess, assessment district, uh, June 29th, 2021, uh, Rio de Mar assessment district engineers report and uh, a Rio de Mar uh, assessment district engineers report pages 56. Uh, oh, they're online and on file. Um, I think that uh, Ken Adler, assistant director of public works is going to be presenting on this. Good morning, Chair McPherson and directors. I'm Kent Edler, Assistant Director of Public Works and Assistant Assistant District Engineer for Zone 6. Um, Let me share my screen. I have a presentation here. All right, can you see that? Yes. Okay. So um, I'm going to give a, a brief presentation on the proposed assessment district for the Real Domar Flats drainage improvements maintenance. So the Real Domar Flats area in Aptos often sees flooding. This is due to the area being located in a historic floodplain, as well as an inadequate drainage system that isn't able to, to have the proper slopes to effectively drain the area when there are heavy rains. The drainage system also empties into Aptos Creek, and when the creek levels are high or if the outlet becomes blocked, the ability of the area to drain is greatly diminished. 
Engineers from our Zone 6 staff have been studying this area for many years and in 2014 received an approximately $600,000 flood mitigation grant to design the solution to the problem. After a thorough hydrologic and hydraulic analysis of the area, as well as working with state parks, the Coastal Commission and the County Planning Department, and also completion of CEQA, it was determined that the most practical and effective design was to disconnect the drainage system from Aptos Creek. The design is shown on this slide. It includes new storm drain pipes, which are shown in blue, and these will divert stormwater when flooding up to a 10-year event, which would normally occur. And that will be directed to a new pump station, which is depicted in yellow. From the pump station, the water would be pumped to a deep pit, shown as the purple circle, where the water will be infiltrated into the soil. It should also be noted that this project is designed to address flooding up to the 10-year events, which will relieve the majority of the common flooding issues experienced in the area. The area's flood, the area's flood during storms significantly smaller than the 10-year event. The estimated cost of construction for the project is approximately $4.8 million. And in 2020, we received notice of award of an approximately $3.6 million grant from mostly FEMA, but it also includes some Cal OES funds as well. In addition, Zone 6 was also awarded approximately $600,000 from the Department of Water Resources through an integrated regional water management grant. The remaining local match will come from development impact fees already collected, as well as a minor amount of one-time funding. If constructed, the new system will require, will require approximately $121,000 annually to cover the maintenance of the pumps and other drainage features, as well as electrical costs and contingencies. Although we've been able to secure $4.2 million in grants for the construction, unfortunately, there is not an existing funding source to cover the annual maintenance and operations costs. It doesn't make sense to build a project such as this that cannot be maintained. And since the, the project primarily benefits the residents who own property in the area, an assessment district is being proposed to pay for the annual maintenance and operations costs. The proposed boundaries of the assessment district are shown on the current slide. The boundary includes parcels that are subject to flooding and also parcels that will have improved access due to less flooding. Assessment districts are formed in compliance with Article 13D of the California Constitution. Proposition 218, which was approved by voters in 1996, as well as the Benefit Assessment Act of 1982. When assessments are, amounts are developed, only parcels receiving special benefits, such as parcels that will have a benefit from less flooding, are allowed to be assessed, and they must be assessed their proportional share. General benefits, such as those that benefit the community at large, like beach access, cannot be assessed on the, parcel, on the parcels in the assessment area. An engineer's report was prepared by our consultant, NBS, which is attached to the board item. The report calculates the special and general benefits based upon depth of flooding as well as access. Proposed assessment amounts were also developed and are listed in the engineer's report. Proposed annual assessment amounts, proposed annual assessment amounts for the parcels vary. For example, a house at a lower elevation that currently floods the most often is approximately $375 annually. A single family dwelling that doesn't see flooding on their parcel but will receive access only benefits is approximately $125 annually. In order to form the assessment district, the board must first adopt the resolution of intent to form the assessment district. The next step would be to mail out ballots to the proposed to, to the property owners to vote on whether they are in support of the formation of the assessment district. The votes are weighted, so a parcel with a higher assessment will have their vote be weighted more than a parcel with a lower assessment. Only ballots received will be counted, and in order for the assessment to pass, the results of the ballots must show that there is not a majority protest to the formation of the assessment district. So the recommended actions are to adopt the resolution of intention to form the assessment district to fund the maintenance of the Rio Del Mar Flats drainage improvements project and improve the engineer's report. Set August 24th, 20, August 24th, 2021 at 9 a.m. as the date and time for the public hearing on the formation of the proposed assessment district and authorized mailing of the notice of public hearing and the assessment ballots. So that's the end of my presentation. I'm available for questions and we also have our stormwater and consultant team available as well. I'll uh, go to Supervisor Friend of News District. This uh, is being proposed before we go to the public. Any comments, Supervisor? Yeah, yeah thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and always thank you, Mr. Edler, and your work on this. I mean, this has been going on uh, really for decades, actually. But since I've been on the board, 
This has been a very community driven process. The community has been asking for flood and ponding relief in that area. It doesn't take very much of an event to have significant access issues and flooding issues within that area. In fact, this last winter, again, during a historic drought, we had uh, some really some incomprehensible times down there where you could not access areas of Rio del Mar and the Flats area at all. Uh, we've had a lot of meetings on this with the Rio del Mar Improvement Association and the community down there for the last nine years. Uh, both working on initial discussions of a design, working with the resource agencies because there are uh, protected species in the creek, for example, Coastal Commission, Fish and Wildlife, and others. And then uh, through the remarkable work of Rachel and others in Public Works, they were able to secure a grant that, or actually a series of grants that didn't really seem possible for a long time. And so to be able to land that, now we're at the final stage of asking the property owners in that area whether they're willing to fund uh, the annual operations and maintenance costs in order to do this. It's truly just a question that's posed uh, to them. And what's important about Prop 218 is this opportunity for people to express a willingness or not to, to have that assessment. I think that, that County Public Works uh, has listened to the community down there to design, first to obtain $5 million in, in project funding to design a project that is going to solve the overwhelming majority of uh, flooding and ponding related issues, including emergency access issues that occur down there in the winter and spring. And uh, to have a really uh, relatively de minimis annual uh, uh, maintenance costs that includes things that are outside of our control, such as electrical costs for operating the system. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what the, the property owners down there do. We're gonna continue our, our outreach and making sure that we can answer whatever questions people have um, as Mr. Edler had noted, we've created that the consultants have worked to help us create a website as well where these questions, a lot of the frequently asked questions are available. People can see what their individual parcel proposed uh, uh, annual assessment rate would be. Obviously, our office is open to answer any questions. Public Works is open to answer any questions. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing whether we can get this actually built because we can get it built. We will have solved one of the real vexing problems that's occurred in my district for a long time. We have two major flooding situations. One's obviously significant down in the Pajaro Valley region, and we're, we've really made great progress on that. And I would submit that we've made the same progress on this as we've been able to do a funded project, and hopefully we can do the last part under 218 that's required for this assessment district. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your work too. Uh, now this, the, the hearing is, uh, this is to set the public hearing for uh, August 24th, but is there, are there any comments from the public? Yes, we have one speaker to this item. Call in user three, your microphone is available. Hi, this is Marilyn Garrett, and I'm reading on as the board from the agenda of directors of the Flood Control and Conservation District. That's you. Seems like there used to be a separate public comment on there. Authorize the General Services Department to issue an invitation for bid for a dual polarization expand magnetron transmitter based weather radar system and to advertise for news, etc. For bids, I'm asking you to withdraw this. This is highly dangerous and it should have been on your regular agenda. And I'm gonna say why it should be withdrawn. I have a book in front of me from 1977, Paul Brodeur, The Zapping of America. Microwaves, their deadly risk and the cover up. Microwave radiation, this is on your agenda is more than kitchen ovens. It is radar, television, telephone, and satellite communications. It is diathermy machines, burglar alarms, and garage door openers. Microwave and radio frequency heating is used in the manufacture of many products. Microwaves provide a vast arsenal of weapons for total electronic warfare. Microwave radiation can blind you, affect your behavior, cause genetic damage, even kill you. The risks you run have been hidden from you by the Pentagon, the State Department, and the electronics industry. This item should be 
uh, withdrawn. The book also has pictures of microwave cataracts and talks about people who work in radar having a high incidence of down. Caller 1999, your microphone is available. Good morning, this is James Euling Whitman. Um, maybe I can continue what Marilyn was talking about. Um, he's making a reference to agenda item number 83, which is part of the consent agenda, which wasn't open to public comments. Um, my comment is I'm going to go back to what I attempted to finish speaking on on June 8th, 2021 in front of the school or supervisors during the public comment. False and criminal information about the safety of wireless frequencies with the existing 35 license bandwidths that make up the first through fourth generation technology where these frequencies are critical in importance to all militaries to control enemies. The fifth generation where these over 3000 frequencies, highly more focused beams like lasers are being unleashed upon a largely uninformed population with little civil recourse with powers and legislative government. Um, I believe it was in 1996 that Bill Clinton passed uh, FCC, um, I think it was number 702, where the only complaint that citizens can make is for the physical appearance of these cellular weapons. Um, so I would, I'm going to definitely look into this. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, there, is, there is time for public to comment on uh, consent items really in the agenda. Uh, are there any other um, comments from the public? There are no other speakers from the public chair. Okay, I'll return it to the board. Uh, any other supervisor have a comment they'd like to make on this? A real quick comment, if I may. Sure. Uh, uh, Greg, uh, hi, Keith. This is uh, Greg. Uh, I can picture uh, uh, a new uh, drainage pipe. I can picture the pump, uh, new pump structure and all that. And also, um, uh, the manhole cover and all that. What what is it an out? Uh, what's it called? Uh, what is an outfall structure? So that that's basically the structure where all the drainage that's going to all the stormwater that's collected in the pump station it's going to be pumped to essentially a, a deep pit. So that's the outfall structure is a deep pit that's below ground. So when all the the water is pumped into that area, it is um, it'll infiltrate into the soil. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Any other comments from the board? Uh, entertain a motion to set the public hearing on August 24th. Uh, Mr. Chair, let me just briefly say that the two public speakers were not speaking to this item, which I think was self-evident. Both of them did speak during consent, which uh, was an opportunity to afford yeah. us. There were no public speakers to this item. I will move the recommended actions on this item. Second. Call the roll, please. Supervisor Koenig. Aye. Friend? Aye. Coonerty? Aye. Caput? Aye. McPherson? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, item number 12 is the Board of Directors of the Davenport County Sanitation District. Uh, this is a public hearing to consider the 2021-22 Davenport County Sanitation District water and sewer service charge reports and adopt resolution confirming the 2021-22 water and sewer service charge reports as outlined in the memorandum of the district engineer. Uh, there's a summary report 2021-22 of the Davenport County Sanitation District, a resolution uh, charge reports for 2021-22 Davenport County Sanitation District and the Davenport charge uh, report of fiscal year 20. 122. I again think Ashley Trujillo is going to present on this. Hi, thank you. So, sanitation engineer for the Davenport County Sanitation District. Um, on May 11, 2021, the board approved in concept the fiscal year 2021 2022 service charges for the Davenport County Sanitation District and set today as the date of the public hearing for the fiscal year 2021-2022 service charge reports. The water and sewer service charge reports 
were electronically filed with the clerk of the board for public review before June 1st, 2021. It is therefore recommended that the board open the public hearing and hear objections or protests, if any, to the proposed fiscal year 2021-2022 water and sewer service charge reports for the Davenport County Sanitation District, close the public hearing, and adopt resolution confirming the fiscal year 2021-2022 water and sewer service charge reports for the Davenport County Sanitation District. I'm available for questions. Thank you. Um, we will. This is a public hearing. We will um, ask if there are any public comments. Give that a moment for anyone to raise their hand. There are no speakers to this item, Chair. Okay. We'll return to the board. Uh, Supervisor Coonerty, uh, this is your district. Any comments? Yeah, I'll just move the recommended action and thank the staff for their work. Thank you. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Supervisor Koenig? Aye. Friend? Aye. Coonerty? Aye. Caput? Aye. McPherson? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, item number 13, the last item on our regular agenda. Uh, as the Board of Directors of the Freedom County Sanitation District, this is a public hearing to consider the 2021-22 Freedom County Sanitation District Service Charge Report and adopt a resolution confirming the 2021-22 Sewer Service Charge Report as outlined in the Memorandum of the District Engineer. We have a summary report, the 2021-22 Freedom County Sanitation District. Uh, resolution 2021-22 Freedom County Sanitation District Charge Report and a Freedom uh, Charge Report Fiscal Year 21-22. Uh, again, Ashley Trio uh, will be presenting on this. Thank you. On May 11th, 2021, the board approved in concept the fiscal year 2021-2022 service charges for the Freedom County Sanitation District and set today as the date of the public hearing on the fiscal year 2021-2022 service charge report. The sewer service charge report was electronically filed with the clerk of the board for public review before June 1st, 2021. It is therefore recommended that the board open the public hearing and hear objections or protests, if any, to the proposed fiscal year 2021-2022 sewer service charge report for the Freedom County Sanitation District, close the public hearing, and adopt the resolution confirming the fiscal year 2021-2022 sewer service charge reports for the Freedom County Sanitation District. And I am available for questions. Thank you. Um, this is a public hearing. We'll go to the public. Are there any comments from the public? There are no members of the public wishing to speak to this item, Chair. All right, we'll uh, close the public hearing and return to the board. Uh, Supervisor Caput or Friend, have uh, any comments on this issue? None, none, or an entertainment uh, motion? I'd like to make a quick comment. Uh, if uh, you could explain uh, the exact area, it, it overlaps uh, my district and supervisors. Uh, uh, supervisor friend, I believe, is that, are we talking about the same one? Yes. Okay, it's out there by uh, Airport Boulevard, uh, Green Valley Road, and all the work that's been going on right now. Correct. Okay. And uh, the last question would be about how much longer, I, people have been talking about the backup on the traffic uh, it's moving along very well, though. And uh, about how much longer will they be working on the uh, Green Valley part? I believe the entire project should be finished within a week or two. They were just doing some final um, work on the manholes, and then they're going to be doing the slurry seal on the roads. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Ashley. Thank, Thank you. you. Entertain a motion. Uh, I'll move to approve. I'll second. Call the roll, please. Supervisor Koenig? Aye. Friend? Aye. Coonerty? Aye. Caput? Aye. McPherson? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, that completes our regular agenda for this uh, June 29, 2021 board meeting. We uh, have a closed session agenda with three items. Uh, council, is there, are there any reportable items? 
Yes, there will be uh, a reportable item. Um, uh, and I'm going to ask that this link stay open so that the board can return to session in the event that uh, we do come back to report an item. Okay. So we will, um, would be, well, we won't adjourn this meeting then at this point. Um, okay. you, 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 you will not adjourn this meeting. Okay. We, this link will stay open and then we'll come back uh, to report if there is something reportable. Okay. Okay. We will uh, uh, recess into close, uh, close session and uh, we'll come back uh, on this link uh, if there is a reportable item. Uh, one way or the other, the next meeting, the regular meeting of the County Board of Supervisors is August 10th at 9 a.m. Uh, we will recess and close session now. Okay, Chair, it does look like you have a quorum as well as the CAO and County Council online. Okay, um, I will call the uh, continued budget hearings of the Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors to order June 29th at uh, 2021 at 1.30. Uh, please call the roll. Supervisor Koenig? Here. Friend? Here. Caput? Here. Coonerty? Here. McPherson? Here. Thank you, Chair. You have a quorum? Very well. Okay, we will, um, item number 55, uh, the consideration of late additions uh, to the agenda or corrections, additions, or deletions. Do we have any? Mr. Yes, we do. Um, on item 74, there's additional materials. There's revised attachment A, packet pages 209 and 211. And that concludes the um, corrections of the agenda. Okay. We will um, move to um, the, well, um, you know, I, I think before we get into this, um, we're gonna, this could go very quickly. I just want to take this opportunity to thank our CAO, Carlos Palacios, and our budget manager, Christina Mowry, who is in her last budget session of the county, and we, we don't want to have that happen, but it's going to happen. And all the county staff who took a role in putting this budget together, um, I can't imagine a more difficult situation in a year that one in terms of budgeting with the uncertainties of COVID and the fires, the ever-changing landscape, of reimbursements from the federal and state agencies, as well as the unpredictability of our local economic uh, situation, uh, which continues to be a challenge. Um, but everybody in the county, uh, all the employees throughout these crises that we've had, you've grown through the uh, challenge uh, over and over again. And I also want to thank the, the county workforce who weathered these challenges with us and having your pay cut through the furlough, uh, all the while meeting the requirements of COVID. Uh, truly an outstanding measure, and I know every board member, uh, they may want to say the same thing, but and they're sure welcome to, but I can't over uh, emphasize how critical it was in a time of crisis, how you came through with glow glowing colors. And I just want to thank you as chair of the Board of Supervisors, and I'm sure that uh, maybe some, because uh, we could go very quickly in these next few items. Um, I don't know if any other board members want to say something, but uh, it just had to be said what a great job our county staff has done and our leadership team. Anybody want to make any other comments? I'm sure uh, I know they share them. Go ahead, Mr. Caput. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, you've said it as well as I can say it. Uh, thanks to uh, Carlos and his whole staff for getting us through uh, a very tough year. Thank you, a year and a half. Yeah. Anybody else, and uh, not necessary, but... Uh, I, I agree, Mr. Chair, and thank you for saying it. All right. Um, Mr. Friend, Supervisor. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll just add in that uh, we had a lot, a lot, a lot of uncertainty in the last 12 months, and I feel like there was a, a significant amount of steady leadership across the board, including um, just at every line level employee that just came up, showed up and did their job either remotely or in person. Uh, we weren't sure on the economic crisis how bad it would be and it ended up being bad, but there were decisions made by our staff in order to really right this ship. And it's it's really pleasant to see, especially even in this last day here, some of the investments that are being made in just that short amount of time that we're not just um, clawing out, we're actually reinvesting in, in, in both our employees as well as in, in some infrastructure across the county. So. 
um, we got a long way to go, but I, I think that this is, I, I'd much rather be in today's place than the place that we were last year at the exact yeah. same budget time. And, and, uh, and, and I do, I do also want to express my great appreciation for Ms. Mowry and her work over the course of her entire tenure at the county. You know, a lot of counties are in the newspaper for uh, inappropriate things when it comes to finances and budgets. And, and this county has always um, been above board. And a lot of it is due to your leadership and your work on that, Ms. Mowry. I appreciate that as well as you, our CAO, Mr. Palacios, who's been very, very responsive, not just to board inquiry, but also helping lead us through this pandemic. That's all appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board member want to make comment? Uh, I'll just echo your uh, your sentiments, Chair, and agree that Ms. Mowry, you'll be missed. Thank you. Um, okay, we will move to the regular agenda. <clears throat> Excuse me. Item uh, number 56, the Unified Fee Schedule, a public hearing to consider resolution approving amendments to the Unified Fee Schedule for fiscal year 2021-22, including the addendum as provided in the reference budget documents and outlined in the memorandum of the County Administrative Officer. We have a resolution for the Uni Unified Fee schedule or with exhibits, uh, the 2021-22 Unified Fee Schedule Supplemental Budget pages 105 to 184, 2021-22 uh, Unified Fee Schedule Addendum, the last day budget pages, and the park in impact fees options. Uh, Mr. Palacios, did you want to address this or is Ms. Mowry? Yes, uh, Ms. Ms. Mowry is going to give the staff report on this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, Chair McPherson, members of the board. Um, so the um, I just want to note that we do have a correction that the addendum in Exhibit B includes updates to the uh, park impact fees, and that replaces the language that was in the original Exhibit B in the supplemental. So we're going to add and ask that your board authorize us to update the resolution in accordance with whatever your final actions are. Um, the fee updates uh, are referenced there in the board memo. I won't go through all of them, but just to include and let you know that there are updates from the Ag Commissioner, Cannabis Licensing, the Auditor Controller, Health Services, Information Services, uh, Planning, Public Defender, Public Works, and the Sheriff's Office. And then, of course, the Parks Department uh, had an item on June 8th to address the um, park uh, impact fees, and they provided an update to the, that original uh, recommendation, and that's included in this fee update in the addendum. Uh, the department staff are available to answer any questions um, if you would like. Um, otherwise, we recommend that the board open the public hearing, take testimony and hear objections, if any, to the proposed unified fee schedule, including the addendum close the public hearing and adopt the resolution amending the unified fee schedule. Thank you. Um, is there any, are any comments from the public? There are no speakers from the public to this item. Okay, um, we will close the public hearing on item uh, 56 and return to the board for action. Um, any comments from the board members? Sure. Uh, I just had one question on how exactly the park impact fees are going to work because there's the uh, per unit subdivision fee and then there's the per square foot fee. So is one fee pay paid like at the time of subdivision and the other at the time of uh, getting a building permit? I mean, I must, does that mean that projects will, most projects will pay both fees? How exactly does that work? If Jeff Gaffney can answer that question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Super, uh, McPherson um, and the fellow supervisors. Um, the subdivision fees will be separate and different. So if somebody is creating a subdivision, they will be paying those fees. If they are not creating a subdivision, if somebody is just building a single house, they will pay the other fees. So for example, if you were to build a thousand square foot home, you'd be paying just about $4,150 in fees to build the one house. Versus if you're building a subdivision, it's probably almost twice that. Right, so most single family homes developed on just a regular single family lot would just pay the square footage fee. Correct. Uh, but if it was, if there was a, a subdivision of the land beforehand, then you, um, these subdivision fee would be paid per unit as well as the per square footage fee or it's either or? It's just one, they would only pay the one fee. 
And there is also an option for a subdivider, a, a developer to come in and subdivide. They can actually donate land in lieu of, and so they would pay a separate fee in that regard, a much reduced discounted rate um, if they were to provide land as parkland. Got it. Thank you for the clarification. Absolutely. Good questions. Thank you. Any other comments from board members on item number 56, unified fee schedule? Entertain a motion. Move to approve. Move by Caput. Second. Second by Friend. Call the roll, please. Supervisor Koenig. Aye. Friend. Aye. Coonerty. Supervisor Coonerty. Aye. Aye. Caput. Aye. McPherson. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Can we confirm for the record, um, sorry to interrupt, that that uh, the motion included the additional staff direction to allow the modification of the resolution to conform to the board's actions? That's the way I understood it. I want to make sure that's clear. That's the way we should have had it. Uh, is that the way you understood it, uh, Ms. Cabrera? Yes, I'm understanding it with the request from staff to include any changes that are made. Is that sufficient? Uh, Mr. Heath? Yes, thank you very much. Very good. Okay. Very well. Okay, we will move on to um, item, uh, well, continuing uh, agreements list or CAL or CAL. Uh, there's a, a number of uh, agreements, uh, items 57 to 73. And I think that we're going to have an explanation of that, that we can do this all in one motion. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Palacios, or is it Melody Serino? or who is going to be? I'll address the, the Cal well, Thank item. you, Ms. Mowry. Okay. Yes, so the um, I, I believe you're thinking of the last day report. So we'll take the Cal item first, and which is item 57, and then we'll move to the last day reports and, and we can discuss taking them all together. So um, item 57 is to consider approval of the continuing agreements list. Um, so the uh, CAL, as we commonly call it, identifies agreements that will extend into fiscal year 21-22 and authorizes that we can continue to have pay the and authorize those services and those payments into the new year. Um, the details are provided and staff from the departments are available if you have any questions. Otherwise, it's recommended that the board take any public comment and approve the continuing agreements list and take the related actions as outlined in the memo below. Uh, which authorizes the county department heads to negotiate and execute any changes to the agreements listed in the CAL, um, authorize the county department heads and or the board chair to sign the continuing grant applications and revenue agreements contained in the CAL, and authorize the human services director to sign the collective of results and evidence-based investments or poor agreements contained in the 21-22 continuing yeah. agreements list, and authorize the auditor controller to adjust the list as needed uh, for changes in appropriations made by the board during budget hearings to correct any errors other than the amounts. And we're happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, I will, um, well, um, I, I, I'd like to make a comment on just one of the items that's on this list, and that's the uh, Office of Recovery, Rebuilding and Resilience, uh, item number 68. I just think it's a great opportunity to thank our three once again for their leadership in this recovery and rebuilding uh, after the fires. I appreciate both the investment in our community relief projects uh, in Boulder Creek, especially, but also our investment in the Fire Safe Council. Uh, before August of 2020, uh, when the fire destroyed more than 900 homes in our county, we talked about the possibility of uh, wildfire as a concept that we needed to plan for. And now that it's a reality, we cannot make a more important investment than fire prevention and outreach and education. And to that, I have uh, received a couple of concerns, uh, inquiries from people saying uh, vegetation management along roadways and so forth, please come and get this done. Uh, it's a fire hazard. Uh, it, we have 600 miles of roadway. And uh, to this date, I think we're, we have addressed uh, reducing the vegetation management and more than 300 miles of that. 
and we are continuing that process. So I wanted to let the general public know uh, we are on the public works department and OR3 is on this. Uh, I'm not sure when it'll be completed, but uh, we have done a lot of work. We're over halfway there and we're gonna continue that effort uh, through this year. And I think we'll be getting it done in the next couple of months because of the excellent work of our public works department. Um, and any other uh, questions from the board? So, so chair, um or did you want to talk about it, Ms. Ms. Mowry? We're on item 57. Yes. Um, so oh, that's the Cal. And then we will go to the last day reports after this item. Okay, I've got my agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. You jumped ahead there. Yeah, well, everybody, they know yeah. what I mean. Okay, so the Cal reports, we'll go to that item. Any, any comments from the public? There are no members from the public wishing to address the board over this item. Any comments from the board uh, rather than what I made? <laughs> I just had one question, which is um, the uh, line item of, for, for um, contractor vendorless vendor, which is repeated. I'm assuming that's not the actual name of a vendor. Uh, does that mean that those are recurring expenses that will be uh, put out to bid? Um, what, what exactly does that mean? So those represent, vendorless vendors represent a type of master agreement. And then the there's that gives us the authority to execute smaller agreements. So our, our administrative hearing officers, we have a master agreement. And then we, in accordance with that same agreement, we execute uh, agreements with individual hearing officers. So that's why they're vendor vendors. When we actually engage in an actual contract, we actually have a vendor and we, we establish a vendor. So in the future, I know those are very confusing um, for the public as well. We may consider just looking at um, referencing the master agreement and then showing the actual vendor on the list wherever possible. So those master agreements are typically with um, some uh, association of professionals that then the uh, individuals are contracted to fulfill the services? Yeah, those master agreements are originally brought to your board for approval and then they're, you're uh, granting the authority to execute the individual agreements based on the terms of the master agreement. Got it. Thank you for the clarification. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions from the board on item 57, the uh, continuing agreements list? Seeing none, do we open that? We did open it to the public, I believe. So uh, call the roll, please. Or is there a motion to approve the con continuing agreements list? I'll move the recommended actions. Okay. Sorry, was that Koenig or Coonerty? Koenig. Okay, thank you. Okay. Supervisor Koenig? Aye. Friend? Coonerty? Aye. Caput? Aye. McPherson? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, now we will go to the, I think I'm on the right track now, uh, items 58 to 73, the last day reports, and my comments on number 68 uh, stand. Uh, about the Office of Response, Recovery, and Resilience. Uh, are there any comments for the from the board before we go to the public? Well, um, may I ask uh, Supervisor McPherson, would you like me to provide an overview on the sure. item, or would you like to just ask for any comments or questions? Well, um, yeah, we could. Uh, maybe an overview. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, items on here. I didn't know. Uh, yeah, why don't you give us an overview? It's up to you. It's sometimes no. the board likes to look at them individually. Sometimes we, I can give you a, just a brief overview of the 15 items up through hey, seven. Why don't you do that? Why don't you give us a brief overview? Okay, sure, certainly. So the, the items as mentioned are 58 through 72 are the last day reports. Um, they include a last day report from the auditor controller uh, to address the addition of an auditor uh, for the increased claiming related to the emergencies and the American Rescue Plan and coordination with the finance section of, for the Emergency Operations Center. Item 59 includes a report from the auditor, controller, treasurer, tax collector on the Government Accounting Standards Board, uh, Statement 84, and you will be receiving a report back uh, to the board on September 28th with the final budget that addresses the adjustments related to um, GASB 84. Um, item 60 uh, is a report that includes some additional funding for um, outside auditing services for the cannabis licensing uh, budget. 
uh, based uh, from increased cannabis licensing fees. Um, item 61 includes a report to add a position to the general services department um, to provide um, oversight and manage the purchasing and contracts process as the county prepares to upgrade the contract management module within the financial system. Item 62 uh, provides a report from risk management uh, to address the additional funding needed for the increase in the property insurance premiums of 562,000 and also provide a million dollar increase to the claims reserve to be able to make progress on the $7.8 million target. Um, the reserve has declined below the target due to increased claims in the recent prior years to about $4 million. And staff estimate uh, with this increase of a million to have about 5 million, leaving almost 3 million to fund in the future. Um, item 63 uh, addresses an additional position for the human services department to evaluate and revise the human services mass care shelter plan and emergency plan. This position will coordinate training related to shelter and care operations in partnership with the uh, Office of Response, Recovery and Resilience to improve emergency and disaster response efforts. And item 64 is the um, increase necessary for the county share of the Monterey Bay Air Resources District, which was approved on June 16th by that board. Item 65 includes an increase of an additional position for the planning department uh, to assist with standing up and supporting the new unified permit center we're expecting by the end of this year. Um, and then the item 66 is a report from Public Works, uh, which funds the purchase of a Donaldson regeneration station of $7,000 from their equipment reserves which is necessary to keep uh, vehicles compliant with current emission regulations. Item 67 is a, a last day request for the animal control services budget, which is the increase in the county share for animal control services of $101,989 based on the, um, the approval of the, the, S, the Santa Cruz County Animal Services Board, which occurred on June 14th. And then uh, item 68 is, is the increase you mentioned earlier, which is the $50,000 um, for the Office of Response, Recovery and Resilience to fund um, a contribution to the Resource Conservation District to fund a Fire Safe Council part-time coordinator to support the development of FireWise communities, fire safe education and outreach and grant coordination and administration. And item 68 is from the Probation Department uh, this report uh, funds an additional institutional supervisor for Juvenile Hall in the amount of $129,121 from increased SB 923 realignment funding and general funding. And capital projects, we have some realignments based on some additional funding that was provided uh, for several of our, our capital projects in process. We have additional funding for the main jail generator replacement project. Uh, the Public Defender Office uh, anticipated tenant improvements, uh, the Willowbrook uh, Park improvements, and the improvements uh, for the Sobering Center. And then on item uh, 71, we have some additional revenue that's being recognized from the general county revenues. Um, we are anticipating the state to backfill the county share of the property tax losses associated with the CZU Lightning Complex fire in the amount of 482,000. And we also anticipate some increases in our property tax penalties, interest and redemptions, totaling a million dollars. And these revenue increases are offsetting some of the other increases included in the supplemental last day reports. And then lastly, I think, yes, lastly, item 72 is our report for the technology fund um, this one's near and dear to my heart. I'm, uh, we are recommending an increase of funding for 350,000 to replace the current budget system in order to better address the need to have a more public facing budget system online that integrates the operational plan objectives and performance measures and provides for a capital project budget management system. Staff have been reviewing these options prior to COVID 
and we believe we have a system we are now ready to recommend to the board and we needed to set aside some funding to be able to do that in August. So we will be bringing that back to you in August with more details. And that concludes the overview of the last day reports up through item 72. Thank you and uh, apologize for getting ahead of myself, but um, any other comments from board members? Is there any public comment? There's no public comment to this item. Okay, uh, I'll return this to the board. Uh, for a quick question. Yes. Um, so uh, I don't know if this goes into the concluding items or this one, but um, there's a small or there's there's some arts funding for the MA, the Arts Council, I think some of the schools, the y, YWCA in Watsonville. Uh, anyway, um, traditionally we've treated them like the core programs and um, and they've gotten the sort of the same COLA that the core programs would have. And I'm wondering about them in this budget, a 5% COLA for these programs would be uh, $19,728 total. Um, but I wanted to see if if that's, this is both sort of fitting with my understanding of standard practice and two, is this the right place to try to figure that out? Yeah, I could answer that. We, I don't believe we did include those particular programs when we looked at the increase for the core investments. So if your board would like to add that direction, we can incorporate that into the adopted budget. Okay. Uh, and so uh, so if, my if my colleagues um, are interested, I would move the recommended actions with a, uh, uh, a increase in funding for the cultural and recreational programs, uh, commiserate with the core programs and uh, a 5% and the, the organizations that would get this money would be the Arts Council, Museum of Art and History, Vet the Santa Cruz Veterans Building, Loma Prieta Community Foundation, Community Action Board, Pacific Elementary School, San Lorenzo Valley Youth Council, and the uh, YWCA of Watsonville uh, for uh, a total of, it looks like $19,728. Any comments from the board? I think that's a welcome addition as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's great that we uh, get on track and, and stay on track with what we're doing for the arts in this uh, county. Any other um, comments from the board? Uh, I don't know if we have to go back for that added action uh, to the public, but I... What, what I would suggest, Supervisor, is that you address this action as part of item 74, which are proposed budget concluding actions. Right now, it looks like what you're meaning, it looks like what you're intending to do, although we didn't do it officially, was consolidate um, items 57 through 72, which are all individual actions. We've cons it looks like we've consolidated those uh, to hear them all at the same time and have a public hearing on those, uh, not a public hearing, but public comment, receive public comment on those. Um, but there's no place within those items for the discussion that we were and vote that we were just about to have. So I would suggest you you continue that discussion to item 74 and just um, and just accept a motion on accepting uh, the last day reports for 58 through 72. Okay. I will withdraw my motion and uh, issue a, another, uh, have a, make another motion uh, for the recommended actions, which are item 58 through 72. Second. Okay, call the roll, please. Supervisor Koenig. Aye. Friend. Coonerty. Aye. Caput. Aye. McPherson. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, uh, we'll go to item number, uh, uh, the re redevelopment successor agency concluding report and final budget actions. Um, uh, I guess I better read this one. Uh, as Board of Supervisors of the Santa Cruz County Redevelopment Successor Agency authorize the auditor controller with concurrence of county administrative officer to make necessary year-end adjustments and adjustments for the 2021-22 due to increases and decreases in available financing and approve the 2021-22 proposed budgets for the redevelopment successor agency as recommended by the county administrative officer. We have the 2021-22 proposed budget, pages 289 to 292. 
and a line item detail on pages 593 to 594. Um, Ms. Mowry, again. This uh, report allows the board to just take the necessary concluding actions related to the redevelopment successor agency budget. And it's recommended that your board approve the report as outlined in the memo and take the related actions and staff are available and willing to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the public? There are no members of the public wishing to address the board. Okay, uh, I'll turn it to the board. Uh, any comments from board members? I'll move the recommended actions. Second. Please call the roll. Supervisor Koenig. Aye. Friend. Aye. Coonerty. Aye. Caput. Aye. McPherson. Aye. Thank you, motion passes unanimously. Okay, uh, then uh, we're going to the uh, last day reports. Item number 74, consider the 2021-22 County of Santa Cruz proposed budget including actions. Authorize the Auditor, Controller, Treasurer, Tax Collector with the concurrence of the County Administrative Officer to make necessary year-end adjustments and adjustments for 2020-2021 due to increases and decreases in available financing and approve the 2021-22 County of Santa Cruz proposed budget, including concluding report items and take related actions as outlined in the memorandum of the County Administrative Officer. There's a financial uh, update on attachment one, uh, exhibits one through three, a concluding report, a state budget update, uh, attachment two, errata to the 2021-22 proposed budget, attachment three. Uh, Ms. Mowry or Mr. Palacios, uh, do you have any comments, general comments? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a walk through it just briefly. Um, attachment one provides a summary of the, the changes in the last day and concluding reports and the board uh, changes and the impact on contingencies. Exhibit one reflects the supplemental changes. Exhibit two reflects the last day changes and exhibit three reflects the concluding changes, which includes the accounting details for the various adjustments impacting the general fund contingencies, leaving 5.75 million available for a general contingency, which represents about 90% of a 1% general fund expenditures as a general contingency to address any unforeseen adjustments to expenditures and revenue estimates. Closing actions one through 11 in the, in the memo are provided for the 2021 uh, current year uh, items and items 12 through 34 provided for the 21-22 budget and authorize the auditor controller with concurrence of the county administrative officer to prepare and report back to the board with the adopted 2021-22 budget incorporating all the changes and adjustments. So um, I'd like to actually thank the department heads at this time and their budget staff for all their hard work on the budget especially the county administrative office staff under the leadership of Carlos Palacios and the Board of Supervisors. After addressing the unprecedented financial challenges faced by the county as a result of COVID-19, it is a welcome relief, especially as I prepare for retirement in October, to see revenues improve and enough funding from the state and federal government to cover our costs and our revenue losses have the furlough eliminated and start to rebuild the general reserves within the next year, oh, excuse me, budget. The 2021 budget is a prudent financial plan given our financial constraints and staff will provide a report to the board in September with a comparison of the estimates to the final actuals for 2021 and the impact on the 2021-22 adopted budget. Since this is my last budget presentation, I would like to, um, Thank the board, the CAO, and the department heads and the county staff for their confidence and support for the past 15 years as I've managed and coordinated the budget. I feel very fortunate to have had a remarkable career and to have worked with some amazing people. I look forward to completing tasks associated with this budget through September and transitioning my duties to my successor as I plan for retirement in October to spend more time with my family. So it's recommended that the board approve the 2021 concluding report and approve all the related actions and take any additional actions as needed and staff are available to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, Supervisor Coonerty, did you wanna just yeah. uh, mention? <laughs> sure, so I, first of all, I wanna thank 
thank Miss Mowry for her work. It's been said before, but it, it can't be said enough. We can't do all the things we have to do as a county uh, if we don't have uh, our fiscal house in order. And she's done a great job through uh, various storms uh, keeping that house in order, and we're very grateful. So um, I'd move the recommended actions with the addition of uh, restoration or uh, a COLA uh, for the cultural and recreational programs listed on page 246, commiserate with the uh, core funding, increases in core funding. I'll second. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Uh, okay, we're uh, the supervisor Caput. Yeah. We're on uh, item seventy-four. Correct. Right. Okay. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm going to vote for the whole budget. I do have one exception. Uh, I'll be voting uh, for the budget, but with the exception of uh, under human services, uh, Planned Parenthood, Marmonte, I'll be voting no on that, which is on page one fifty-eight of the proposed budget and page 48 of the supplemental recommendations. Okay, that clear. Uh, any other comments from the board? Uh, did we ask for public comment on this? Uh, who, uh, is there any public comment? There's no public comment to this item. Okay, all right, we have a, a motion and a second. Uh, and uh, Mr. Caput's, uh, Mr. Coonery's additions and Mr. Caput's uh, with all of uh, supporting certain items that were mentioned. Please call the roll. Thank you. Supervisor Koenig? Aye. Friend? Aye. Coonerty? Aye. Caput? Aye. McPherson? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously with amendments. Okay, and we knew it all get come to this. And, um, closing remarks. Um, I think we've said what we wanted to, but uh, everybody can take on that, uh, first district uh, supervisor, uh, Tony, do you have anything to say on the closing remarks of our 2021-22 budget? I just wanted to thank uh, all the staff for helping me navigate through this first budget cycle uh, and um, looking forward, as, as has been said, uh, to uh, growing forward from here. Very good, thank you. Supervisor Friend, any comments? Um, not not in, in addition to anything that I've um, already said, although I would like to welcome Supervisor Koenig through his first budget cycle, and I and I promise they're not all like this. They're not normally <laughs> virtually in pandemic screwing and everything else, and so I, I appreciate that uh, you were able to adapt during this this cycle. And and as my and to reiterate my comments previously, uh, Ms. Mowry, thanks for your steady hand and leadership behind the scenes on this. Um, I mean, the county is nothing without a without a budget and the funding that we do, and and uh, you've done a great job on behalf of the county and its residents for some time so thank you okay supervisor Coonerty, any comments it's it's all been said uh, so uh, thank you thank you everyone uh for the team effort very good Your supervisor caput wow what a year and a half uh, and uh, i i hope uh, we're out of the crisis area uh, I pray we don't have a, a bad fire season and uh, hope to see all of you in August. Very good. Chair McPherson, um, Chair McPherson, I had some comments. Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah, we're not going to cut out the CAO. Okay. okay yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to uh, conclude our uh, budget hearings by thanking the board, um, your uh, support of staff throughout this year has been remarkable and much appreciated by staff. We really do um, welcome uh, all of the support that you've given us this year. You know, in my 29 years in local government, uh, I have lived through the aftermath of the Loma Prieta earthquake, uh, the aftermath of the 1995 floods, um, 2001 um, tech recession, and then the 2009 Great Recession. And, and now I can say that I've made it through the 2020 uh, pandemic, COVID pandemic and CZU fire. And um, I made it with you, with you folks as my uh, peers, as my teammates, uh, as my supporters. And I, I really wanna thank each one of you for sticking with us through this very difficult year. Um, it's remarkable that we've now entered into recovery phase 
uh, and that we actually now are being able to start new initiatives such as the full funding of our um, new office of response recovery and resilience, our new health uh, housing for health division for to address homelessness, and that we've um, funded new programs that the board brought forward, including our apprenticeship training for residents and high paying to move into high paying careers, expanding broadband access and support women and minority owned businesses and the focus restoration of the focus intervention team, uh, all while uh, coming back to a hybrid work environment for our employees. So I wanna thank our county employees. They have been remarkable this year. They have done more than um, can be imagined in terms of sacrifice. Uh, and they brought this community through this very difficult year. So thank you and uh, my, my highest praise for our county employees. And finally, I want to thank um, Christina Maori. Uh, she has, uh, in my four-year tenure as CAO, she has been my partner and my um, guiding hand in getting uh, the county through the various initiatives we want to do and, and through this crisis. Um, I can't imagine what we would have done if we didn't have Christina um, guiding the, the budget through this last year. Very difficult, very difficult very difficult and Christina's experience got us through it. So thank you, Christina. Um, my highest praise to you. You're a true professional and you truly care about the community. And we thank you for what you've sacrificed and given to this community. 32 years of uh, service for the county and I think 15 years up here in the CAO's office. And now she's gonna retire into her coachman Galleria RV and uh, tour the country <laughs> so uh, godspeed best wishes well deserved thank you very much christina we're going to miss you thank you mr Plasters. and that concludes um, our budget sessions for 2021-22 thank you everyone for your cooperative efforts and your input uh, we will now adjourn the budget sessions for the year and our next regular board of supervisors meeting will be at, on august 10th at 9 a.m Thank you, everyone, and um, God bless. Let's hope for the best. Bye-bye.